Hi folks, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to upload an image in MongoDB using Node.js and how to retrieve the same image data in our React application. Okay guys, I already have created a video like this, but in that particular video, we didn't care about React. We didn't care about how to retrieve that same image data. But in this video, we are going to complete that. For that, I have initialized my backend server and launched a react application which is pretty simple here you can see i have deleted all the extra unnecessary files in the source folder and all extra unnecessary stuff just a uh, complete a uh, new blank react application which is saying image uploading react that's it in the backend server i have completed my basic setup like uh, how to set a uh, server here you can see first of all we imported express and and we created an uh, instantiate of that express application and we make use of body parser and mongoose and cors because we are going to connect our backend application with our frontend application for that we have to enable cost right so that's why i imported the cost and a port number okay here you can see i have connected my backend application with mongodb atlas here you can see this is the connection which i have made and a simple get request and our backend server is listening on the port number 5000 this is what we have done till now and as i said before we have done our basic setup for the react application okay guys now we are going to focus on a particular package which is multar here you can see guys this is the package which is going to help us to upload image here you can see in the first line itself they say Multer is a Node.js middleware for handling multi-part form data, which is basically used for uploading files. That's it. Okay, guys. So the idea behind how to upload an image is whenever a user wants to upload an image, the particular image is going to be saved in our file system, like here in the particular backend server. Like uh, we will create a folder, and in the particular folder, our images are going to be saved. After saving in that particular folder that particular image is going to be saved in the mongodb atlas which is in the format of binary data okay i think i am speaking a lot you will get to understand when we code it just keep on listening you will get to know what we are doing first of all let's install multer for installing multer you have to say npm install multer okay don't worry guys if it sounds pretty confusing just listen on the flow you will understand it Okay, we successfully installed our multer package. Now let's import it. For that, let me say cons multer. Okay, before that, let's check whether our application has any error or not. I already have installed Nodemon, which is a development dependency. Just say don't say. Which is a development dependency. I'm going to run my application by using Nodemon. Nodemon index.js, right? index.js okay it will initiate our application okay let's import the multer for that i have to say require okay multer let me name it or let me spell it correctly otherwise i will space the error okay it says server running successfully we connected successfully it means here you can see if we are not connected with our database it says like it has an error if we connected with our database it says connected successfully it means we don't have any issue with connecting our database like uh, we, i have my you are resting properly with my correct username and the password okay for that it doesn't give me any error let's focus on multer now let's configure our storage here you can see where it is here you can see we have to configure our storage like this okay for that let me get down under the mongoose connection okay before that we have to create what models otherwise we can't able to store our data in the database right okay let's first concentrate on models.js here you can see we i have a file called models.js i didn't write any schema it now let's write schema okay let me name okay let's say image schema let's say new mongoose dot schema okay this is going to take 
two things. One is a name which is in the format of string. After that, we need our image data. Okay. Which is data in the format of buffer. Okay. Buffer is similarly like uh, array data type guys don't confuse what a uh, buffer is buffer is similarly kind of like a array data type that's it uh, after that we have to specify the content type like this content type like image slash png because because our buffer data type is in the format of what image so that's why we have to specify the content type okay this is our schema guys very pretty simple straightforward uh, name which is in the format of string and the image which is in the data type of buffer that's it now we have to export this schema before that what we have to do we have to create it as models export dot module is equal to image model export it as image model now we have to convert the schema as models mongoose dot model okay it will ask us the name let me name as image okay let's say the particular schema which is image schema okay we are successfully done with creating a schema and creating a model okay now let's get back to the index.js file here let me do a small change which i left it the default let's say image data here okay with this done now let's configure our storage engine right which we saw in the documentation right for that you have to say cons storage is equal to smalter dot disk storage we are going to save our image data we are going to save the image data initially in our computer after that saving that image data in our computer we are going to take that particular image data to the mongodb atlas this is the concept guys you will get to understand when we code it completely okay till that just follow me malter dot disk storage now here we have to specify the end destination where the image is getting upload okay we have to say the destination destination it does take a call but it does take a function it will have a request file and after that it has a callback okay let's handle the callback first callback set the error as null and we have to set the end destination part which is upload okay don't feel like bit confusing we have to create a folder called upload now uploads now for that let's say folder uploads okay we successfully created a folder called uploads here you can see guys the end destination is uploaded here where image is getting posted that image is going to be saved in the particular folder called uploads because here in the storage engine we have specified the destination which is the end destination to be uploads folder okay we successfully declared the destination after that we have to specify what the file name has to be what the name of the particular image to be for that we have to say file name likewise it takes take it takes the request and then a file and then a callback as usual what we done for the destination okay let's handle the callback first it set the set the error as null okay now we have to specify the file name okay let's say we, here we have our request in the request there we have our file let's say let me go to this and check what they have specified here okay not request we have to set in the file here you can see we already have our file so that's why in the file we have many fields like file name original name field name in this case i am going to use the original name because i am not going to upload as many images i am going to upload only two or three images because this is a demo just i want to show you how to do this stuff okay file dot okay here you can see we have field name file name mimi type 
original name this is what we are going to use okay this is done guys the idea is pretty simple guys first of all we have to set the storage engine here you can see the storage engine is disk storage we have to set the destination where the image is getting uploaded or getting saved after that what is the name of image what is the image name is to be the in our case i am specifying the original name itself if you want to change it like you can do this like uh, you can add some number to it or you can do whatever you want but i am going to save as the name original name okay that's it now we have to configure it how to do that const upload okay uploads don't confuse it guys just follow me multer storage is storage okay here you can see guys we just configured the storage till now we didn't say this is the storage you have to use in the 30 second line we are asking our multer to use this particular storage engine okay here we configured this here we saying the multer to use this particular storage i hope you don't get confused okay this is pretty simple code guys just see just several lines of code first of all we have to set the storage engine after that we have to configure the storage engine that's it okay we are done with this what we have done we created our schema and we done with our storage engine now let's get into the most exciting part which is posting the image data it means we have to handle the post request right okay whenever the image is getting post it is going to be done with the post request okay let's do app dot post okay after that we have to set the path which is home route now we have to configure our middleware which is multer middleware here you can see we should not configure like the storage engine we have to configure where the upload is happening here this upload we have to configure here let me do some extra spaces here upload dot m method which is single because we are going to upload the image as single single image not as many image not as like a 10 images together we are going to upload images like one by one okay here we have to specify a field name okay guys just concentrate on the field name properly because this is very 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 important step here i am giving the field name as test image okay after that here you can see we just configured the path after that we configure our middle valve which is multer now we have to handle the request after that a response okay before that make sure whether you imported your models which is image model okay i already imported my model now i have to save my data right let's say save image we have to save the image until now what we have done is we have just configured the middleware now we have to handle the saving the data in what mongodb now we have to take care where the image is going to be saved how to save in the mongodb okay now let's say save image okay as usually it takes image model i think i have to say new here new image model it does take uh, what are the data we have specified in the models we have name and image data only two data straight forward data like a uh, image okay image is going to be coming from the front end which is in the body okay guys don't worry we are not going to code any front end we are going to use uh, what is that postman which is a uh, api tool to get the front end data okay request dot body dot name after that we have to configure our image okay in the image what we have data it should be in the format of buffer okay but where the image is getting saved the image is going to be saved in the uploads right for, okay guys before that let me import file system for that i have to say fs is equal to require fs okay we successfully imported the file system now what we have to do is for the name data we don't have to care that much we are going to get the data from the front end in the body part and we are going to save that data in the mongodb but for the image data we have to take 
much more care okay in the models we have specified data and content type okay let's say uh, sorry guys here i should not do like this i have to say string i just forgot okay i think uh, this is the correct format let me check it once again in the geeks for geeks website they have you they have given correctly here you can see the data is buffer and the content type is string okay don't make me don't mistake me guys I just i forgot that stuff okay now let's get back into the app.post request first of all we have to handle the data type okay what in the starting of the video i said no first of all we are going to save the data in the uploads folder it means our image is initially going to be saved in the upload folder we are going to take that image and we are going to save in the mongodb for that i have to say fs dot read file sync and we have to set the path where the data is okay where our directory is uploads okay okay this is done after that because why i am saying upload uploads is this is the folder which we specified in the destination okay because the images are going to be saved in the uploads folder once i do the demo you will get to understand what is happening okay after saying the uploads we have to save the file name it is pretty simple request dot file name that's it okay this is how it should be let me check once again okay let's get back somehow down okay file name which we did in the previously okay we are done with this but i have to say request dot file dot file name okay now we are done with the data now we have to say content type content type which is in the format of string right here i am going to say it as image slash png because because our data are in the format of image not in the format of gif or mp4 those are going to be saved in the format of png so that's why we have to say content type i hope it makes sense now okay now we have to save this for that we have to say save image dot save okay not z it is a okay here you can see guys we are dealing with mongodb which is a third party whenever we are dealing with a third party using node.js we have to handle it we don't know whether it will give a yeah, success response or failure response for that we have to say if it is success response then just say console.log image is saved okay if it is failure response we have to handle it in the catch block i hope you guys are already familiar familiar with this okay let me add a bracket over there okay now let's handle this catch block okay if it is failure response just say the error what is the error is and just say error has error has occur okay with this done i hope we are done with this now let's open our postman api tool and check whether we have any error or not i hope we have done correctly we should not get any error okay guys now check whether it has any error or not after that let's get into postman to check our api okay let's open our terminal check whether it has any error or not here you can see guys our server is running successfully it means still now we don't have any error now let's get into postman and check whether our app is running or working perfectly fine or not okay for that let me get into postman this is our mongodb atlas guys let's get into it sometime later which is two minutes later okay now let's first check our get request here you can see our port number is 5000 okay now let's say send over here and we should not get any error i hope so here you can see this is working perfectly fine we are getting this is working fine now let's say post request because this is the get rec this is the get method which i specified here this is working fine this is what we have got there 
okay now let's do the post request just say post and get into the body here you should not get into the url encoded you have to get into the form data now you have to say the two data one is name let's tick this out and we need another one field okay let me name whatever i wish uh testing uh okay image one okay image one now here you have to very 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 careful guys you should not do like this where it is you should not give this image like img you should give the this name which we have specified in the middle bar right what we have specified the field name we have specified the field name as test image this is the name which we have to give here otherwise it never ever gonna work so please 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 be careful while doing this test image this is the field name which i have given here so that's why i am saying test image over there okay so please be careful guys you have to say the field name which you have specified in the middle bar okay let's get back into the postman and say click on the select files now okay i am getting into pictures there i have pictures i am clicking on artwork.png okay just say open it really doesn't matter what the whatever the image you give just i want to show you how to do this okay now say send i hope it should not give any error it has to work perfectly fine let's say send okay as expected it gave an error to me so i actually found out where the actual error was it is a simple error guys it is a uh, careless error guys which i made here i should not say come i i have to say plus here so that's why i actually got that error mm. so that's why i actually got that error that's it guys uh, uh, it's not a it's not it's a simple error guys uh, it's not a big deal to handle it so make sure you should not say comma over there you have to say plus over that otherwise it is always going to give error if you say comma if you say plus it doesn't give any error okay that's it after that i have made another one small mistake not in the index.js file in the model models.js here i should not say modules.export exports.modules i have to say module.export okay module dot export otherwise it also doesn't gonna work guys so that's why uh, you have to say module dot export here you have to say what um uploads plus request dot file dot file name that's it guys i hope this time we should not get any error this time it will work perfectly fine okay here you can see guys i added a extra more line in the 52 which is a uh, success response if we saved successfully our image it just say image is saved okay guys with this said let's test our image okay before that i have to de delete this okay let me say move to trash here you can see guys our upload folder is empty just uh, see here our uploads folder is empty when our i say here you can see name is image one and test image one okay before that i have to delete a uh, one thing which is this okay let me delete this okay now let's say here you can see name is image one test image okay don't forget to say test image otherwise it never gonna work let me say send okay here you can see guys we get our success response which is image saved okay let's get back to the folder let's get back to the backend server and check the uploads here you can see guys in the uploads we have our screenshot which is just now we saved okay now let's get back to the mongodb and check and say refresh we will have a single data which is just now we posted right okay it says loading documents here you can see guys we have our image one now let me add another one image image two okay let me undo this and say select files okay in the pictures let me say artwork.png let's say open and say send okay here you can see guys this time also we get images saved now let's get back to the mongodb at last and check refresh sorry and click refresh not check refresh here you can see we have image 2 and we have our image data which is in the format of binary okay okay guys here we have in the format of binary but actually this data is getting saved in the format of buffer 
okay that i will get to it later when we are handling or when we are dealing with front end okay let's get back to the server and check oh okay sorry oh shit i unfortunately closed that let me open that once again here you can see guys in the folders we have our artwork.png which is we uploaded just now till this point we successfully completed our backend server now let's get into front end application which is our react application okay guys now let's focus on react application okay let's jump into react app here you can see guys uh, we only have our a single heading tag nothing more than that and i deleted all the extra unnecessary files in the source folder and even in the app.css we don't have any styling and let's get into app.js okay guys now what we have to do is first of all we have to connect our front end application with what our back end server for connecting application we have either we can use fetch basically we have to work on apis right whether we can use a fetch or you, we can use a separate particular library or package which is axios here i am going to use axios package for that let me install axios okay let's say new bash okay let's install axios first for installing axios you have to say npm i axios it will install axios axios is basically a promise based http client that's it guys using axios we are going to connect our api using axios we are going to connect our front end application with our back end server that's it okay let's import axios okay let's say import axios from axios okay we successfully imported axios after that we have to import two important hooks one is use effect another one is use state okay let's first import use effect and use f use state okay let me say import use state from react okay after that let's say use effect let's say use effect okay we successfully imported both the two hooks now let's work on use effect first no first of all we have to define our data by using use state let me say cons data set data not date data okay let's say use state okay guys initially our data is going to be empty after getting the data from back end we have to update our data with our current data which we have got from the back end right for that we have to use the special hook called use effect hook i hope you guys are already familiar with using this particular hook called use state hook now initially we have to set our data as what empty string let me say empty sorry not empty string let me say empty array okay we are done with our use state hook now let's use use effect hook i know you guys are already familiar with use effect use effect is basically runs every time our app re render or it runs at the initial ren rendering of our application so that's why at the initial rendering we have to get the all the data which is in the back end to the front end application right for that i am going to use use effect okay let's say use effect it does take a call back now let's say we have to use our axios http promise based client which is going to be simply a get request guys and our end url is http localhost local host slash 5000 i think so no 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 it has to go like this like http localhost slash slash and after that we have to say 5000 that's it okay oh sorry guys i forgot to do uh, another one thing which is in our backend server okay let me get into the backend server till this point we successfully completed how to upload this post 
we ha have just handled the post request still now we didn't handle the get request now let me handle the get request which is going to be super simple guys you don't have to worry a lot about it okay let's say get okay let's say enter here or better i can delete this let me write once again newly let's come down under the post one let's create a get one app dot get okay it's going to be home route after that it also take request another one response okay let's say we have to get all the data right const all data is equal to image model dot find that's it it returns every data which is in the database that's it guys we don't have to worry a lot about with this which is going to be a async operation so that's why i'm going to specify async await okay we are done with this now we have to send this data right for that we, i have to say rest.json or you when you can say rest.send it really doesn't matter okay we successfully handled our get request now let's check whether it has any error or not it says no error okay guys now let's get back to the postman and check whether it has any error or not i hope it won't show any error for that let's say get back into the postman and change the post request to get request and say send okay it is taking time longer than the usual i don't know why it is taking this much amount of time uh, okay we got the data here you can see guys we have a big array here you can see a big array here you can see uh, let's first check whether the name or uh, it's a huge one guys here you can see this is the buffer array which i say here you can see it is a big one here you can see here we have the name image two we have our two data so we don't have to worry about that now okay guys now let's focus on our front end react application just come to this where it is here you can see now okay now axios returns two things one is a success response which is uh, which is the actual data or other one is failure response which is a error basically now we have to handle the success response which is it will basically return all the data if it is success response we will catch it in the then block okay res set the data oh i left a bracket there okay we have to set the data as res dot data at this line you have to concentrate more here here you can see whenever the axios returns a success response it means we have a data inside the success response after getting the data we are changing this empty array empty data into the particular data okay now we have to handle the error data if it has any error just console log the error nothing more fancy console dot log error just say it has an error okay now we have to focus on the rendering page which is the basically the return one just save this and just close this terminal just close it okay now we will have many data not a single data for that i am going to use a method called map inside we want to write javascript in the html in the return html we have to open curly braces and we have to say data dot map okay we have many data right for that i am going to use map method for every single data let me name as single data single data okay i have to open brackets there because map itself a higher order function it does take a callback function okay now it will have many data right in the many data we will have our image now what we have to do important step guys just focus on this we have to convert our binary data here you can see we all 
we have a huge array which is basically the buffer data we have to convert this buffer data into base 64 string for that we i am going to say cons base 64 string let me now we have to convert this buffer into base 64 there is a thing called btoa after that uh, we have to say string dot from char code after that you have to say you new unit 8 array here unit 8 array we have to specify this what where is it let me go to the top we have to specify this data this array data here you can see we have image inside that we have data inside that we have our buffer data for that we, i have to say like this right are the front end application each data in the each sorry single data in every single data what we have we have image okay first of all let me specify image inside every single image we have a data inside every single data we have the buffer data okay that's it we are successfully converting that buffer data into base 64 string now we have to display this base 64 string into the image for that we have to use image tag okay i m g image tag not like this guy okay image we have to say in the source not like this open this special quotation i think so why does it work that much perfectly fine okay open this special quotation now we have to specify our base 64 string but not alone the base 64 string like we have to say like this data and image slash png comma base 64 i hope like this it has to go let me go to the stack overflow page and check okay just click on the stack overflow what happens it hangs out i don't know why it is doing like this okay here you can see like this we have to do just copy this uh, this is what i have done i think i am doing correctly now i have to change this comma to the quotation okay now let's say a comma over here okay that's it we have to open this dollar symbol after like this okay dollar symbol and like this now we have to specify this base 64 string that's it guys base 64 string okay we are done with this now let's say rerun our application well let's check whether it has any error or not for that you have to open your terminal which is where is that our our front end application is running successfully it has no error it is working perfectly fine now let's okay here i forgot to say return t u r n okay now it will show the image here you can see guys we successfully get our image uh, but it is damn big let me do small size okay let me say with this 300 pix, uh, 300 percentage oh not 300 percentage with this 300 i think so here you can see here here you can see guys we successfully get our image that's it guys we successfully retrieve our image which is in the database which is in the format of buffer array we successfully converted the buffer array into the base 64 string and the base 64 string is converted into the image and we successfully displaying the image that's it guys i hope i completed this video that's it let me walk through the process quickly first of all let's get back to the backend server here you can see guys so first of all we connected or we done all those basic steps after that we declared a storage engine after that we initiated a post request but in the post request we configured a middleware which is multi storage here you can see here i named it as upload you can name whatever you wish but you find upload as the common name so that's why i say upload after that uh, here you have to remember this test image this is the field name you should give 
what you should give the test image this field name otherwise you can't able to upload the image okay first of all what it happens whenever we say post request it uh, takes this particular image to the par to this uh, destination folder which is in our case uploads and that image is getting saved in the destination folder after that we are taking that image from the destination folder and storing it in the mongodb atlas okay after completing that okay that's it uh, we are successfully saving the data in the post request we are getting all the information which we are getting all the data which is in the mongodb atlas and just returning to the front end here let's get back to the front end application here you can see it is also a basic step uh, we are using axios uh, for connecting our backend application where it is uh, axios uh, for connecting our front end application with the backend server we are getting the if it is success response we are getting the data and storing in the data variable if it is failure response we are handling it after getting every single data we are after getting the data we are using mac method uh, for doing operation in the every single data in the every single data we are converting the buffer array to the base 64 string after converting the base 64 string after converting the buffer array into base 64 string we are displaying it as an image that's it i hope you have learned something new if it's so just click on the subscribe button do like this video and share as much as possible thank you for watching my video tata bye bye juice love you